the Jupiter at Nights presented live on the internet. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Jupiter at Night. My name is Chris. I'm Alan. Hey there, Alan. Uh-huh. What? I don't get to introduce myself. Oh, okay. okay. I'm Jeremy. Hey there, Jamie. Hi. (laughs) How you doing tonight? Great. Good. Well, tonight's episode, we thought we'd talk about- Just steamroll right through that. (laughs) Yeah, but- And you're here, too. Yeah. No, I was going to say hello to each one of you individually. So, Jeremy, what's going on? What's going on tonight? Hold on. Alan, I want to talk to you a little bit about- I got the camera over here. Hey, what's up? (laughs) Oh, you're in the shot, too. Never mind. Sorry. No, go ahead, Jeremy. Go ahead. (laughs) No, no, I'm- it's, it's really, it's all you. Oh. Well, we were talking about the future of TV today because the CEO of Hulu came out. And uh, the scuttlebutt is this guy actually might get in a little bit of trouble for this. And you might understand why after we talk about this. This guy comes out in his blog and he says, hey, by the way, we got Jon Stewart. We got Stephen Colbert. Mm-hmm. That's good. And uh, if you want to read on, here's my thoughts on the future of television and the post- goes on for quite a while. Yeah, so we'll kind of break down some of the important points here and, and tell you down, some y'all. of the stuff break, that's going break, break on. Break because down, It really boils down to the, the ultimate point here is that on-demand de- media and internet distribution of created content is going to be the way of the future mm-hmm. and that all the middlemen that are handling all that will eventually fade into the background. And that, that's kind of the, the overarching story, but to hear this kind of thing coming from the CEO of Hulu, who's pretty much... I mean, I know you guys don't get it outside the U.S., but within the U.S., within the states here, it's the internet yeah, go-to. Next to Netflix. I, well, yeah, the, those two are pretty much in competition with yeah. one another. But even with digital distribution, doesn't there have to be a distributor? No. Now, here's a, here's one of the points that he's making here is that basically there is a four-part structure uh, as it currently stands. There's the content creators, the advertisers, and the consumers. And in the middle, the guy that kind of coordinates those three ends is the content delivery system, be that a major network or Hulu or whoever. The Comcast or... But as on-demand media, I, I keep saying on-demand media. I demand on-demand media. <laughs> Maybe on they should demand. just start calling it demedia. On the media. Demand. It's yeah. the media. It's the media. <laughs> what are you going to do? Jupiter Broadcasting. Independent demedia. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So he's saying as people go on demand. that It starts to put consumers directly in, content, uh, in contact with creators. So not only cutting out the delivery system, but advertisers as you well. Mean, you mean kind of like us with our live chat room exactly. right now. Exactly. We're, we're a direct to consumer. Exactly. Yeah. So that's what the route he's saying. He's saying, profe- <clears throat> he's saying pro TV is going that way. Mm-hmm. But I, I don't see that really happening because they got to get paid well here's the thing and this is the key thing is that's exactly why he says that's what's going to happen hulu runs a bunch of freaking ads on their videos Tons. but he's still i mean yeah go on with your point well, but their mean, ads are got, still he's got da- yeah they're still better than tv yeah he's yeah. got data that clearly shows that the content producers can make a lot more money because of because there's a few things that are unique about a hulu viewer one you're requesting that specific episode, that specific video, but they can also build an entire profile of all the other shows you've Based watched. on what shows you subscribe to or watch or, or anything. And then they can on. start delivering called targeted advertising. Like on Facebook, they do that, and Google Ads attempts to do that. But this is after they build a profile of you. That's a premium ad they can sell because we can say, we know this person is a Star Trek fan. Yeah. You know, they've tried that with me, and there's even been ones that are like, does this ad reference yeah, you? Know. It doesn't mm-hmm. work for me either. And... You know, I, I look at the ad honestly because it's like I don't want to be annoyed by this kind of ad. And yeah. they've not you know been what able I think to, it is? They, th- they don't know me. I think the secret to advertising is, dude, is it's they're looking for one person out of 100 to be interested. Mm-hmm. And yeah. it's very and much that, a shotgun approach. That person every now and then is just, like, I'll give you an example. If I saw an ad right now on a video about garage doors that you could convert into, like, a door with a mini door, you know, like you have the full door with a regular well, slide. Yeah. If I saw an ad pop up right now, well, that's exactly what I'm looking for. And, and I can't probably buy it. I would click on that. Because <laughs> you have no willpower yeah. at all. Well, I, I'm looking for that. <laughs> I mean, so it just depends. Uh, and it's interesting. Chris is to, always that one but in see, 100. Hulu, all, Hulu also has, uh, you know, a completely different distribution model besides being also a targeted ad uh, advertising. Yeah. They also only play one commercial per break and they're generally just as long as a television commercial. So instead of getting the four or five or six commercials that sometimes repeat in a single break, yeah. just stupid, 
Um, you can watch your entire show that might be an hour long on broadcasting television in like 46 minutes. To be honest with but you. But I almost get more mad at the one advertisement from Hulu coming on like 20,000 every time I watch a movie. It's that same one for like a month. But yeah. the audience that they're targeting that was the kind of people that will go home and DVR a film and fast forward through every single commercial. Right. So the advertisers for that show that was DVR'd get mm. nothing. Yeah. Whereas if they advertise on Hulu, they get something. That makes sense. Because you can't fast forward through their commercial. I'm just simply not a, a huge fan of Hulu. I think that they still don't have it figured out, and they're still too too commercial. What's interesting is that, uh, not commercial, but too bureaucratic in the way they have to the content. Now, mm -hmm. I know that there's certain restrictions they have to put on there because that's just what the networks require. I, I, I can understand the difficulty there. Right. But I, I, don't, I don't really see, like, I was trying to think down the road, like, way down there let's say 2050 the future of tv we have the super bowl this weekend mm -hmm. our thursday episodes we like to look forward to the and weekend. all of us are so excited about that well this guy is hey food oh right oh that's true and always commercial. good you know food. some people watch it for the game others watch it for the ads and you go for the food the ads have sucked they that's, haven't been as good for like i don't even watch them like I've, I've watched a few you know just like trying to find the ones that got linked the most mm -hmm. and it's been like really uh, you That's know what, guys, in the comments, if you'd like us to do a Jupiter Night wrap-up of the commercials, if you guys think that some of them are interesting, let us know in the comments. Yeah. We might do that. We and just as a them. side note, since we were talking about Hulu, if anybody's in the States, they're doing, since they can't show the Super Bowl, obviously, yeah. but during Sunday, they're going to have live polls of which ads people enjoyed the most and for what reasons and stuff like that. I hate getting that much into the ads, personally. But, but it's it kind of an event unto itself yeah, these it days. Now, what I was saying is I was trying to think of the future of TV. You have the Super Bowl coming up. Uh, I honestly think that the end future delivery of content is probably more something closer to what we're doing now. Probably mm -hmm. not exactly what we're doing, but something closer. Uh, because there's really not a... What, why do I have to have a Hulu website? Why can't I just... JupiterBroadcasting.com becomes a channel on your TV. Right. And you just go directly or, to us. It's getting close. Yeah. Or an app. I mean, you had mentioned this earlier. You know, Apple TV's coming out with their their own you set think they top would. box. You know, you got the Apple TV. It's it it's, it's runs iOS, the same operating system the phone and the iPad mm -hmm. do. They could put a, a marketplace, an app store on that, and, and instead of having to, app. and instead of having to pay a hundred, hundred fifty bucks for a good premium cable, you buy an app. You buy the NBC app or the, the Cartoon Network you app. Download but the app then I free. feel like I'm being nickeled and dimed to death. And well, why unless there's something, I okay, there you go. It could be there free with is. ads, but what if it's? I'm mm -hmm. just saying, even if it's got ads, if you don't, if you buy a hundred dollar Apple TV box once, and then you get a, you download a free app. And then you just stream it with a few ads on it. Well, that's another, thing anymore. See, that's another thing that I actually want to mention because this Hulu CEO's letter mentions dual stream revenue sources, which is something Hulu's just started to get into. They have the ad-driven free stuff mm -hmm. with and a decent library. Oh, the Hulu Plus system The Hulu sucks, Plus so. is, is ad-free. and it no, has, it's not ad-free. Well, it's got a lot, much larger library. It does, That's yeah. the primary yeah. exam, um, benefit of it. But it actually sounds like, and, they, and Hulu hasn't really said this, but some people actually think they're showing more ads on Hulu Plus because Whoa. they have your name and all that because they really target the ads. That's, that could uh, be the case. So I, what I want to see is like way out there. I want to see like, uh, let's just get rid of all this stuff. I want, I want in 2050, I want to sit down and turn on my 3D TV that doesn't require glasses, that has an integrated Kinect-like sensor. Mm -hmm. And then I just start watching the Super Bowl at like a virtual reality stadium. You're biting my idea. I have the end all to this conversation. It's virtual reality. That's where it's going to end up, whether it be a helmet or just like integrated into like a room or whatever. Well, it's got good 3D it's gonna TV. Be, I want to swear so bad. Screw <laughs> 3D TV. No, you I'm see not these? Like I, don't, I don't want to wear glasses. more glasses. No, no glasses. They're working on no glasses. That's anymore. why it's, yeah, screw that. It's going to be like a hollow deck. If well, you yeah, will. great, but I don't know. There you go. I'll put it in your okay. guys' terms. Okay. <laughs> now are you excited? Well, I just Hollow don't think it's, it's going to be a reality. Well, think really? about it in, not, in, not in our 50 lifetime. years. Think yeah. about it a little differently. Instead of having a holodex primary. See, what you're talking about is like five years off. What you guys are talking about, you know, the well, holographic projections day. so that you can join a, let's it's say, like, here, man. If, you're in, if you're watching the Super Bowl and you're at home and you want to watch the Super Bowl with a buddy that lives in Germany. Yeah. Well, all of a sudden you just flick on your special chat room thing and he's sitting next to you. That's creepy. They're already like doing that. it. Dude, have, have you seen the ESPN stuff on the Xbox 360 where you can get on the headset and join like a well, virtual yeah, tailgate yeah, party yeah, yeah. and stuff? Mm -hmm. That's fine. I'm but, saying that only like yeah, that's VR. Whatever. It's, it's cool, but it's lame. Well, VR is the way it's going to be. They were so close. They had the helmets and stuff and the little gloves. I want to be, like I butt, be able to be sitting in my chair yeah. all relaxed. Sure. 
but feeling like I'm basically like walking around the sidelines like, oh my God, did you see that? Did you see that? Yeah, you right down there. on the and field. And then well, would be right the next to the camera me. definition is not, improving not, and 3D, um, you know, they could just get a blanket like image of everything. you'd be sitting next to me in the chair, but you'd be like in the game next to me or you wherever you want to be. You could in the huddle. Yeah. And you could, you could be on the offensive line watching and, the and snap you know, if from you, three if feet away. If you wanted away. to be connected to your friends, then they'd be there with you. And then you could pretend like you're running with the guys. Yeah. So it'd be like a game. And you might Dude, have this to guy pay for that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but like, oh my God, I can't. Oh, well, I oh no wonder he gets actually. paid so much. Like, <laughs> that would end all those, like, oh, why didn't he do that? It's like, you try it, man. Put on the helmet. Yeah, Put right. It, flick on the room. Let's do this. I you got my, nothing. Check it. This is how they could do it for free. And this would suck, but this is how they do it for free. All right. So you'd get in your VR outfit or whatever you get into. Mm -hmm. And then you'd have, like, the Red Bull VR room. And you could hang out and watch the Super Bowl in the Red Bull room. And it'd be, like, all decorated with Red Bull stuff. And I have, like, Red Bull models in there mm -hmm. and it'd be you, so you could the hang mascot out for flying by it'd be it'd be from red bull or you could go in like a premium room to be like non-branded and you could hang out with your buddies and stuff but you'd have to probably pay for that one right now I the other, that's how it's gonna additionally now you mentioned this to me earlier and this is the part that you you didn't mention just now but i like is if you go to the red bull room and you it's free but then you also earn like red bull points yeah yeah and you can trade that in for merchandise like on their red website bull. or something and or I just, free I red bulls i want to make this oh, clear that'd be awesome, wouldn't it? Yeah. this Sports isn't just and turning your uh, red bull points you got from your vr visit um, during the super bowl right this isn't just like <clears throat> sports and stuff this is like everything you could be like walking in pretending like you're solving the crimes on like nypd blue and be mm -hmm. like yes Whatever I know, but think say. how awesome of a social experience that would be for the country to be able to come together in a much more real way during these those events. Like, this is kind of a sucky thing to bring up, but you remember after 9-11, which I hate it when people say that, mm -hmm. that like, there was like this real kind of like bonding that kind of happened on a national pride level yeah. because people were like communicating, like hyper communicating, and, and, and the whole United States just all of a sudden felt very small. Mm -hmm. Remember, I just well, felt we like, were all scared, and so yeah. I know, but if you yeah. could, if it, it's kind of like Twitter does. Twitter kind of shrinks the world a little, and and, and all this kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. So, but if you could, you know, if you could really see everyone, and I mean, that would just be really quite an experience. Just saying, just saying. Now there are some future texts coming down the road, and some of this stuff that we've just talked about could be adapted to fit some of these roles. First of all, I mean, there's obviously Connect, and I've actually got an article in our uh, in our show notes about how Connect could revolutionize television and how Microsoft will probably bungle it. <laughs> well, they already have. It seems like the hackers are the ones doing the cool stuff. Yeah, I It's agree. like every day, it's like this new video of this hacker making this cool-ass game. It's mm -hmm. like, why can't I play it? You know what I want to see somebody do? I want to see somebody pull the guts out of a Connect and hook it up to like an HD camera and then really see what that Connect can do with yeah. an amazing... Absolutely. Optical Another thing that is mentioned that you mentioned is 3D without glasses. That's actually already here. Yeah, yeah. they're they're working the on the 3DS. It. Yeah, it was at CES. Yeah, they no, had no, a, I wanna, the I wanna they had a 52 so or 54 inch display. It was 42 inch. But it was big. It was, it was a, a big ass television. It was 3D with no glasses. Yeah, I mean it wasn't. It wasn't the greatest image quality. That's yeah. why they're well, that's not why shipping the high version. They do have a 12 inch version that you can buy that works great. Why doesn't 3D just go work on itself for five years and call me back then? You know yeah, what? Yeah, exactly. You, had, you could have with a 12 inch screen though a 3D tablet with no glasses. That actually Ugh. sounds like that could be coming. It sounds or like a 3D a, laptop. There's a there's I think it might be ViewSonic or somebody that hasn't been officially announced yet. Maybe it's LG. You can find spy shots online of an Android tablet mm. that uh, is. Uh, has dual cameras so it can shoot in 3D and has a 3D screen. Wow. See, 3D is not, it it bothers me more than not. Certain movies would be like, yeah, okay, if I'm going to see it, I'll try to see it in 3D. Yeah. But, but otherwise, if you combine I, it with things like uh, that are coming eventually down the line that are even further out. If like you combine it with connect, holography, holographic technology. With, with like virtual reality. Yeah. Yeah, with virtual reality or... And then you combine it in surround or like, sound. Think about really got something Iron Man. Think yeah. about Iron Man's no, Jarvis I want computer. someone to make my idea. That's why I'm, I'm willing to blab about this because I can never do so, it. So someone go do it. The Iron Man Jarvis computer was holographic imagery yeah, you so know, projected it, into a workspace yeah. or a, a, an That's environment that was built reality, for it. right? No. 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 I don't think so. I mean, you can already pro tr project three-dimensional... Uh, holographic images that can be interacted with. I've got a and link in our show notes to, they to can one teleport of those. Teleport information. Mm -hmm. bits. I was going to show this picture. I meant to show this picture when we were going to talk about the future of TV because I love this old 
Did you guys grow up having had that? Yeah. Okay. That same okay. Did you TV guys like have that? a black and white TV yeah. growing yeah. up? Yeah. yeah. And then yeah. that it was a little portable too. Yeah. Well, I, I played. Had, well, we had one of Nintendo those, but we had the like uh, 13 inch yeah, one 13 in, inch the, in the kitchen that my yeah. mom always watched the news and then, on. And I watched The Simpsons all the time on that. Eventually, they replaced that and that became my TV. Yeah. Until the tube died. Yeah. But my television was actually a lot like this one that you were showing earlier, and the screen had like the the tube had gone bad, so like. Two inches of the oh, screen had fallen off the side. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it just kind of like melds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. God, it makes me feel old. All right, what else we have coming up? Wireless oh. power, I think, would potentially revolutionize things in some ways. Plus, oh my uh, god, but I flexible so, OLEDs that are yeah, that are already I'm coming out. About. I flexible like OLEDs. wireless power, but it scares me at the same time because it's all in the air. Yeah, well, that's true, but I mean, it'd still be cool, and it could revolutionize yes. things like the OLED. The OLEDs currently that are in production are, first of all, they're really small. The image quality isn't that great. I will give it that. It's yeah. technology in progress. Yeah. But this is computer screens as flexible and thin as paper and not breakable. I they're, mean, like they're in early production stages. Right. And right now it requires that those things have this big transmitter and receiver box. And that's next the to gotcha, it. right? So like, basically for an OLED screen about, you know, two by three inches or something like that, you have a cell phone sized <laughs> receiver that hooks onto it. So but that's cool as hell. So is that how they're going to make like the active camo stuff? Oh, that could be a good idea. That I know. I know that's not television that. though. <laughs> it's kind of, you could, you could play so, TV. Yeah, on show this camo because suit. this is a concept product and basically oh, snap. I've seen that. I the screen fake. rolls up into the tube Yep. and then you just pull it out and chunk. You have a computer screen right there in front of you, like an iPad type that's device. That's crazy. Touch sensitive. OLEDs can be completely touch sensitive. Now I also saw a Sony Vio laptop that's, OLED top to bottom, including the keyboard surface. Yeah, I saw that. I, I just don't know about that, but, but it's interesting technology. It really is. Yeah, that's crazy. That combined with touch sensitivity could be amazing. And that's and mm -hmm. uh, I'm so disappointed in your guys' future because you went like 40 years, and then that's all I, you could do. No, is, you you, you came up with like I'm, I'm, not no, Hulu no, Plus, but like more. Hulu oh, Platinum. Dude, if I could have any future I'd want, we'd be rolling into holodecks while we're warping to Alpha Centauri. I'm just saying, it's riding our DeLoreans. I think virtual right? reality is realistic. We we had it growing up. They were so close. It was sh shitty. The graphics were horrible. I think that people's but it was there. expectations are higher these days. I think that they would require holographic projections and lack of peripherals. And But they're you know, getting there. I they know. already can do holograms. So. I know, but yeah, now but they suck. They're like the six VR, frames per second. I know, but... The VR we used to have is not the like VR that we want anymore. But think about 50 They'd have years to reinvent they have it, it now. I agree. Upgrades. I think Jeremy's right. I think, you'd have, I think you'd have to have a completely new VR technology for one... I mean, everybody's expectations are different, and what they're going to want to implement is going to be completely different. Mm -hmm. and it's just, I think it's... Okay, th problem, think about the original NES to the Kinect. Right? The That's problem. a huge jump you're, in you're, 20 years. Are you ready for the main problem? The main problem is it's TV, and so that means it's got to be built in and to every device as an as an industrial standard across the board. And very everyone, easy to use. Every stand, Everyone has to adopt that standard, and it's got to be super, super crazy easy for the consumer. Like Because it's in your TV. It's got to be a button on the remote. Easy for okay, a two-year-old. Okay, through the TV, even a video game. Like, come on. Okay, well, well, that's well, not that, tonight's topic, Alan. That, 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 that <laughs> I but was, it's still virtual reality, <laughs> that's and that's not, what I'm getting that's at. That's not going to be 2050. I think that'll be a lot sooner, but I think in the TV, it's going to be out the ways. Yeah. No, it won't. Well, and I don't know. Maybe You're it's wrong. just because I'm starting to get old, but it feels like technology's starting to slow down a little bit. Well, I don't know. I mean, ten bucks. I'm feeling that way. Ten bucks in fifty years, we're gonna have virtual reality. It's recorded. All right, we'll do it right here on Jupiter Night. <laughs> ten bucks, in fifty years. All right, you're well, fifty on. years. Of course, we'll have it by then. That's not Chris much. isn't gonna live that long That's anyway. What we were talking about. <laughs> okay, forty years, because you said you said twenty fifty. And yeah. is that in so including uh, yeah, interest and inflation by that point? Sure. All right. All right. We'll I have mean, to convert it over to intergalactic as hell, and then it's just the original ten dollars. <laughs> 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 then you just get a handy man. That's all well, you yeah. Do. I mean, that's worth ten dollars. I mean, we're not. I mean, come on. I have other things we want to touch on. No, yet. check our show notes, guys, because we did. Uh, first of all, if you don't want to read that epic blog post by the Hulu's um, CEO, I put just a, a brief like cliff notes version Very in our show notes. notes. Yeah, and then links to videos showing off some of these gadgets we've mentioned and stuff like that. It's it's good. Check yeah. it. Yeah. Nice. And hey, that's something to do over the weekend, too, if you're not watching the Super Bowl. But mm -hmm. what is you crazy? And just a reminder uh, to the Linux Action Show fans out there, the traditional show <laughs> is taking this Sunday off. Brian had his baby. Congrats to Brian and his wife. Well Healthy done. baby girl. And yeah. uh, it's not going to be an official show on Sunday. I'll probably put something out for the folks, maybe like a behind the scenes video or something like that. Ooh. But uh, otherwise, we'll be live for Stokes Saturday, the new weekly missions coming out. We're going to be mm -hmm. doing that live. And uh, that'll be a ton of fun. You can join us live and uh, get your input in on that, and we'll 
roll that into that episode of Stoked. Sure will. All right, everyone. Well, Jupiter Night returns on Tuesday. And thanks so much for watching tonight's episode. And until then, have a great weekend. What is it? Dude, Phantom are you of the serious? Opera? Phantom of the Opera. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Totally. Well, well, all right, all right, all right, all right. I thought it sounded familiar. Dude, yeah. my grandparents, yeah, my, my grandpa, butt cavity. my grandparents <laughs> love that shit. Top of my butt so cavity, Alan. Get that was butt. good, dude. Get I like my, that. Get out of my butt cavity. No, never. <laughs> all right, here we go. It's Jupiter Night in three.